Good Tuesday morning. Welcome to Begin in the Word. Our text today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, beginning in verse 37, where Jesus says, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly, I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the conclusion to the limited commission. And as we look at it, you will immediately see a certain structure. You see a lot of whoever's, whoever loves father or mother, and whoever does not take up his cross and follow me, whoever finds his life and whoever loses his life and whoever receives and so forth, whoever gives. And so that's, it, Jesus here is setting up all of these conditional statements. Those who do these things will receive this outcome. And we can largely divide it into two parts with a break here in the middle. The verse 37 through the first part of verse 39 refer to the negative consequences, the kind of things that we ought not to be doing. Whoever does these things will not be blessed. They will not be worthy. In the second part, 39b through verse 42, are the positive things. You do these things and you will be blessed. So we'll, we'll divide it into those parts as we look at it. First of all, whoever loves father or mother is not worth more than me is not worthy than me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So the first category of people that Jesus says, if you fall into this category, you are not worthy. And you notice he repeats that, not worthy of me, not worthy of me. And again in verse 38, not worthy of me. So it's a pattern here that's emerging. He says, if you love your family, if your family is more important to you than me, than, than the teaching of Jesus, you're not worthy. That sounds harsh. We love our family. We prioritize our family. Not just our parents, but but our children. Whoever does, loves your kids more than me, Jesus says, you're not worthy of me. Now, I, I would submit to you that the greatest act of love you can give to your son or to your daughter or to your father or to your mother is to love Jesus more than anything else. It's the greatest act of love you can give because no one can bless your children. No one can bless your parents more than Jesus can and more than Jesus has. And so if you truly love your parents, you will love Jesus more because you're putting your care and your trust and your concern in the one who can truly bless them. So if you love if you love your family more than Jesus says, he says you're not worthy of me. Verse 38, whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And we are seeing here the eerie foreshadowing so often found in the gospels pointing to the to the end of the text when we read about the crucifixion of Jesus. Whoever does not take up his cross and follow Jesus. Jesus bore his own cross. He struggled under its weight. Someone had to be compelled to carry it. This was the burden, the sacrifice he made in service to God. And as we follow Jesus, we are called to make a similar sacrifice. Whoever does not take his cross we are to pick up the cross and not just wander about. We are to, pay, to pay, take up our cross and follow Jesus on that long, dusty road to Golgotha. We are to be sacrificial in our living just as he was sacrificial in our living. And if we're not willing to sacrifice, if we're not willing to surrender ourselves to the will of God, we are not worthy. So category one, those who prioritize family. Category two, those who prioritize themselves. And then verse 39 continues that if you find your life, if you look inside, you prop up a mirror and you like what you see and you say, there's my value, there's my meaning, you find your life, you will lose your life. So this is the first group of, of, of those who are not worthy, those who love family and those who love self more than they love Jesus. And then now we're going to look at those who are worthy, those who do receive the blessing. First of all, if you lose your life for Jesus' sake, not just for any old reason, 
But if you lose your life for Jesus' sake, you will find it. Now, don't interpret this to mean you have to die for the cause in order to be blessed. That's losing your life here as a metaphor for surrendering your life. If you prop up the mirror and you look at it and you say, I see a wretched sinner who's hopeless and helpless and is in need of salvation, and you surrender to Jesus, to his salvation, to his cross, you put your hope and trust in his resurrection and you live your life in obedience to his commands, you are losing your life because you're saying, I've got nothing valuable inside of me, but in Jesus, I see everything. You are going to find it. And this is a principle you find in all four Gospels. If you, if you love your own life, you're going to lose it. And if you give up your life for Jesus' sake, you will truly find it. In other words, you cannot truly be yourself until you give up yourself. That's what Jesus is saying. In this world today where everyone wants to be authentic, they just want to find themselves, be the authentic version of themselves. If you want to find your true authentic self, recognize your wretchedness, and turn to Jesus, and then you will find yourself. You will find your life. Verse 40, whoever receives you, receives me. So the, the, the first category of people who are blessed are those who, who recognize that they are worthless in themselves. They lose their life. They surrender to God. They will find it. The second category are those who receive fellow disciples. Those in this context, the apostles who are going out preaching the, the message that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus says, when they receive you, it's not you they're receiving, they are receiving me. And whenever they receive me, it's not just me, Jesus of Nazareth, they are receiving my Father, the one who sent me. And so Jesus says, those who are truly blessed, who receive the blessing of the work of Jesus, are those who receive the disciples. You cannot be blessed as a follower of Jesus, unless you are hooked up and integrated with the people of God. It can't be done. If you want to, re you want to receive God the Father, you got to receive the one he sent, Jesus. And if you want to receive the one that Jesus sent, you've got to receive the people of Jesus. Verse 41, the, and he gives a principle here in verse 41, the one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. The one who receives a righteous person because he's a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And the meaning here is that the act of receiving allows you to be a partaker in their reward. You receive the disciples, you become a partaker in the reward of the disciples. And they are partakers in the reward of Jesus because they're receiving him who is a partaker in the blessing of God Almighty. In verse 42, whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard my father quote this verse. It's a verse that is very valuable to the church. And it, it's because it sets a standard for service that is attainable. It's not whoever crosses land and sea and plants churches in every nation of the world and translates the Bible into every possible language. Those will be the ones who will not lose their reward. No. It's the one who gives some of the little ones even a cup of cold water. In the ancient world, giving a cup of cold water was, as commentators point out, that was just an expected courtesy. You didn't get paid for that. That was just a normal act of hospitality. Someone shows up, you offer them a drink of water. And he says, if you give a little one even a cup of water because he is a disciple, so connect this here to receiving the disciples that we saw back in verse 40 that we've looked at. If you will give a cup of cold water to even a child because he's my disciple. This is this small act that no one would reward. It's just normal, common courtesy. It's like saying thank you and you're welcome and holding the door open for someone. Things that are just small and minor. But Jesus says, God is so concerned with the behavior of his people that even the smallest of, of act, of the smallest good deed, if it's done because he is a disciple, you will not, you will by no means lose your reward. God cares about even what the things we would think are small and inconsequential. I think sometimes we tell ourselves that the only people who can be true disciples are those who are moving mountains for the cause of the gospel. And God be praised that there are those who make great progress in the advancing of the gospel in this world. We ought to be thankful that there are those who can do that. But Jesus here says, that you will not lose your reward just for giving a cup of cold water. 
don't forget the small things. The things it takes for a church to be at peace with one another, to love one another, to have harmony. Those small deeds, Jesus says, they matter. And God is watching. and He won't let you lose your reward. Thanks for joining us today as we have begun in the Word of God. And as you've begun today in the Word of God, it's my hope that you live out today in the Word of God.